In a quiet town in eastern Mongolia, a lonely elderly woman found a small kitten she believed was abandoned. After two years, when a serious incident threatened the village's tranquility, the feline revealed its true nature. One afternoon, an elderly woman named Irina was returning from the local store in eastern Mongolia. At 75, she lived alone and struggled to move around. Her back and knees constantly ached, and arthritis in her fingers worsened with the weight of the shopping bags. The villagers ignored her, except for some teenagers involved in local gangs who never missed a chance to harass her. As usual, when she turned the corner with her bags, she was surrounded by four young people on bicycles. Irina tried to ignore them, but the more she ignored them, the louder they became. The boys followed her for three blocks before finally leaving her alone. She moved away from the main street, followed a small road, and then entered a path that led to her house. Finally alone, she heard noises coming from a small trash container to her right. At first, she thought it was a rat since these makeshift garbage bins were prone to pests. However, as she got closer, she noticed a small bundle of fur. She dropped her bags on the ground and bent down to help the little kitten out of the situation. Without hesitation, she wrapped it in her coat, picked up her groceries, and headed home. Back at her house, Irina took the kitten out of her coat and observed it closely. It was adorable, with dense gray fur speckled with white and a rounded face. Finally, a friend, she thought. She hugged the kitten to her chest, stroked its back, and promised that she would always take care of it. She told the little feline that it no longer had to be afraid because it now had a safe home. As the months passed, the bond between Irina and the kitten grew stronger. She named it Batu, which means faithful and firm. When a year had passed, Batu had grown significantly, reaching Irina's knee height and exceeding the size of any domestic cat she had known. Once, when trying to take Batu to town, he got excited at the sight of a dog and ran after it down the main street, causing a commotion between Irina and the local merchants. After that episode, Irina decided not to take Batu to the town anymore. Besides his peculiar behavior with dogs, Batu had an impressive appetite. Every morning, he devoured a large portion of food, starting with a bowl of sardines and then asking for more with a deep, rough growl. That sound sometimes scared her, as if she had a wild animal at home. In the second year, Batu remained her constant companion. Sometimes, he disappeared during the early morning hours to explore the nearby grounds but always returned within a few hours. Batu's company helped Irina venture out more. When she went shopping, she felt safer and now used a cane to fend off the boys who harassed her. This defiant attitude did not please the gang boys at all. They quickly got disoriented when their victims reacted, so they decided to devise a malicious plan. One Wednesday, shortly after noon, Irina said goodbye to Batu and headed to the town. She was in a good mood, her knees were less painful and her back felt more flexible. She wanted to finish her errands quickly to return to her furry friend. Meanwhile, the teenage gang members were lounging on their bicycles in the shade of an abandoned building on the outskirts of town. When they saw Irina walking down the corner street, they seized the opportunity to act. They headed to her house and began looking for a way in. One of the boys took a large stone from the garden and, laughing, threw it against the kitchen window. The glass shattered into pieces, and the three boys entered the house. Batu, who was sleeping on Irina's bed, woke up to the sound of breaking glass and lifted his head. With ears alert and hissing loudly, his eyes fixed on the boys as they entered the kitchen. His gaze was firm and determined. When the first boy left the kitchen and entered the living room, Batu moved quickly. The boy didn't realize what was about to happen. The cat leaped onto his face, attacking with precision. The boy fell backward as Batu growled and scratched his face ferociously. The other boys were so shocked by the attack that they hesitated at first, but when they heard their friend's scream of pain, they reacted quickly. One of them tried to kick Batu to get him away, but the cat was too agile. He dodged the kick, grabbed the attacker's leg, and bit down hard. 
The boy screamed in pain and started hopping on one foot, trying to shake off the feline. Meanwhile, the boy on the ground got up and ran towards the back door. Batu, still clinging to the other boy's leg, finally let go when the boy managed to reach the exit. Back in town, the three boys ran past Irina. She was puzzled to see that they didn't pay her any attention and noticed that one of them had a bloodied face while the others were pale, as if they had seen a ghost. When she returned home and discovered what had happened, Irina was shocked and horrified. She used her old phone to call the police. When the officer arrived, he seemed uninterested in Irina's story, perhaps because he was pleased to see that the boys had learned a lesson. However, when the officer saw Batu, he immediately became alert and his hand slowly moved towards the weapon at his waist. In an alarmed tone, he asked Irina to calm down, mentioning that she had a palace's cat in her house. Irina laughed and explained that Batu was just her friend and pet. Then she asked what a palace's cat was. Only two years after raising Batu and making him her loyal companion did Irina discover the terrifying truth about Batu's true nature. The sergeant explained that a palace's cat is a wild and quite dangerous feline. These cats are usually hostile to humans and can attack if they feel threatened or cornered. In some cases, palace's cat attacks have resulted in fatalities. After some discussions, the sergeant agreed to leave Irina and Batu alone, as long as she ensured that the cat would not come near the town. Currently, Irina and Batu live happily in the same house. Little has changed, except that the troublesome boys have stopped bothering her, which is a great victory for her. What did you think of this story? Like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.